land acknowledgement and then those will be brief for you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the B.Ed. Celebration Chapel. You made it. Um, I'd like to just welcome uh, everyone who has made it out this morning, the teacher candidates especially, but also the, the faculty advisors, the B.Ed. faculty and instructors, uh, and the other uh, staff and faculty and administrators who've uh, come to join us uh, this morning. Um, I also wanted to say congratulations to each of you. Um, you may not know me uh, because we don't have an overlap, but uh, I currently am serving as the Vice President, Academic, and Dean of Undergraduate Studies. And in that context, I just regularly hear so many wonderful stories about all of the great things that Tyndale teachers are doing out in their classrooms and how you're impacting the lives of students. And I really look forward to hearing how you all contribute to that, to that story. Um, why don't we uh, open with a word of prayer uh, before we uh, turn things over to uh, Yvonne Messenger. Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. We're so grateful for all that you have done to make this Bachelor, this bachelor of Education program possible and for how you've worked to bring each of these teacher candidates to Tyndale. I pray that you bless our time together this morning as we, as we reflect on the good work that you've done in the lives of these candidates. Amen. For thousands of years, the Greater Toronto Area has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. It is part of the Dish with One Spoon territory, a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that committed them together to share the territory and protect the land. Other Indigenous peoples and nations have subsequently entered this territory in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. It is on these lands and in this spirit that Tyndale seeks to engage in its work. We pause and take time to acknowledge the land, not simply because of recommendations that have come out in the Truth and Reconciliation Report, but because we believe that this acknowledgement raises a call to action. And as Justice Murray Sinclair said, education is key to reconciliation. So as you begin your teaching career, I encourage you to make the most of the privilege that you have to provide your students with meaningful opportunities to learn the truth of our shared history and to partner in the journey of reconciliation. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Dr. Franks. I just want to welcome you all to join us in a time of worship knowing that the Lord, our God, is the light, our love, our joy that has brought us here to our celebration today. So we stand up with joy, acclaiming that our love reaches to the heavens and our faithfulness stretches to the sky to the Lord Almighty. Please stand as we sing. Your faithfulness 
slow. That's not the love of God. The love of God is exciting, it is joyous, and it requires some clapping. So, if I can hear some clapping, that would be much appreciated. Oh, Lord, my God. Some wonder, consider all my words thy hands have made. I see the star, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout my universe display. Then sings my soul. 
Hallelujah. Good morning. How great is God? Student voice is always present. It's not our job as educators to give student their voice. It's our responsibility and profound privilege to honor their voice. It's with that privilege I get to introduce two of our own to speak on behalf of the students this morning. Stephanie Salib will represent our primary junior cohort, followed immediately by Ruth D'Souza. Please welcome them. Good morning. So when I started the program, one day I was a little bored and I made a song. It's not a very good song, but I'm gonna sing it anyway. And I am not like our worship team, but you will hear it anyway. <laughs> Today I don't feel like doing lesson plans. Do 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 do. I just wanna lay in my bed. Do 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 do. Don't feel like opening WhatsApp. So leave a message and I'll get back. Cause today I swear I'm not doing anything. Nothing at all. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to thank my peers for nominating me to be the primary junior speaker today. We did it! Today marks the day we finish a long 16-month journey about a year ago, we met each other on campus for the first time, confused about how to do a lesson plan, and now we're starting as professionals in the field. This journey has not always been simple, and sometimes we may have questioned whether this is really where God wanted us to be in the moment, or why we're here, whether continuing was worth it, or anything like that. But I know for certain that with God, nothing goes to waste, and no part of our journey, journey is purposeless. Not a single one of us is the same person we were when we entered this program. We grew, we cried, we laughed, and we, so and we sweat more this July sitting down than ever before in a workout. <laughs> we're not in this profession because it is well paid or easy. It's the next generation that counts. We do this out of passion and that even on our worst days, we know that we're still influencing them. A teacher, an OG influencer, holds so much power and requires great wisdom that is incomparable to any other profession. This profession is one that is all about heart and each one is different. Each teacher's heart has its own kind of youthfulness that cannot be matched to another person's. And as we continue to embrace this identity, we continue to flourish and do what we do to show our students how to be authentic global citizens. Today, don't open WhatsApp, because today I swear I'm not doing anything, nothing at all. May you be proud of the work you do, the person you are, and the difference you make. Congratulations, class of 2022.
to walk with you and take good care of creatures great and small. It didn't take long for us to fall, but you This is a story of when Jesus was interacting with a scholar. Luke chapter 10. Just then, a scholar of the scriptures tried to trap Jesus. Scholar, teacher, what must I do to experience eternal life? Jesus, what is written in the scriptures? How do you interpret their answer to the question? Scholar, You shall love the Eternal One, your God, with everything you have, all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, perfect. Your answer is correct. Follow these commands. 
and you will live. The scholar was frustrated by this response because he was hoping to make himself appear a little smarter than Jesus. Scholar, ah, but who is my neighbor? Jesus, this fellow was traveling down from Jerusalem to Jericho when some robbers mugged him. They took his clothes, beat him to a pulp, and left him naked and bleeding in critical condition. By chance, a priest was going down the same road. When he saw the wounded man, he crossed over to the other side and passed by. Then a Levite, a religious person, who was on his way to assist in the temple, also came and saw the victim lying there, and he too just kept his distance. Then, a despised, non-believing Samaritan journeyed by. When he saw the fellow, he felt compassion for him. The Samaritan went over to him, stopped the bleeding, applied some first aid, put the poor fellow on his own donkey. He then brought the man to an inn and cared for him through the night. The next day, the Samaritan took out some money of his own, two days' wages, in fact, and paid the innkeeper, saying, please, take care of this fellow. And if that isn't enough, I'll repay you next time I pass through. Which of these three proved himself a neighbor to the man who had been mugged by the robbers, said Jesus? Scholar, the one who showed mercy. Jesus, well then, go and behave like the Samaritan. Thank you, Rob, for reading that Bible story to us, the story of the Good Samaritan. Within the B.Ed. department, we do know this story. We read it on the first day of school, and now you have just heard it read again on the last day of school. One reason we read this Bible story is because of its connection to the Tyndale mission. So Tyndale is dedicated to the pursuit of truth to excellence in teaching, learning, and research, for the enriching of mind, heart, and character, to serve the church and the world for the glory of God. We also read this Bible story because in line with Tyndale's mission, this story is the source of the B.Ed. Department's five program outcomes. And teacher candidates, you know these well. They're professionalism, excellence, equity, collegiality, and service. And in this story that Rob read, we see Jesus and the Good Samaritan exhibiting these characteristics. Throughout your 16 months here, teacher candidates, you have grown in these areas. And we asked all of you, which one did you grow the most in? Many of you said professionalism and collegiality. A number of you said service and excellence. Some of you said equity. It was so great to hear from you, to hear your stories of how you grew in these areas. Now, teacher candidates, it was 25 years ago that I was in your position. I was just finishing my B.Ed. degree. Let me tell you how I have grown in some of the five domains over these last 25 years and how God was with me the whole time. Now, 25 years ago, there were lots of teaching jobs available. So as soon as I graduated, I applied, I got a permanent position, and that was great. But after two years of teaching, my family moved. My husband's a pastor, so when it was time for him to move on to a new church, I went with him to a new city. This happened to me three times. I had permanent contracts, and then I had to resign from three school boards, Lambton Kent, Upper Grand, and Peel District School Board. When we moved the fourth time, just when I was setting out to apply for a job in this fourth school board, a new regulation was introduced. It was number 274. It's no longer in play now, but at that time it meant that I could not be hired for a job there unless I 
went onto a list, um, I was number 700 um, in order. Um, these 700 people ahead of me had been hired as occasional teachers in that board previously. And so um, there was really no hope of me getting, getting a permanent position again. But I also had trouble getting on the supply list. So I went for interviews and I was unsuccessful. So I went to one interview and uh, it was a no. I called for feedback and the principal said to me, well, you have a lot of skill and experience in music, drama, dance, and visual art. We do not value that in our board. We need literacy and numeracy specialists. Then I went to another interview. Um, it was a no. I called for feedback and the principal said to me, you spoke a lot about collaboration and we're just not sure of your ability to be an independent thinker and an independent teacher. This was devastating for me because I'd already had years of experience as a teacher. I had several interviews that resulted in me being hired and having teaching positions. And now I was blocked from being able to work as a teacher. So I began to question what I thought was my life's calling. I thought I had some skills and abilities as a teacher and now I started to doubt it. I questioned everything I'd done in the classroom so far up to that point, and I became quite sad, and it was um, a, a depressing time for me. But I needed to help my family make ends meet. I had to get a job. And so since it wasn't going to be in teaching, I applied for a hundred other jobs, rejected from most of them, and then I ended up delivering newspapers and working at the Laura Secord ice cream kiosk at the mall. Now, there were some great things about these two jobs, um, including some great physical exercise on the paper route, and I met some inspiring people who worked at the Laura Secord. But this was also humbling for me, because at this point, I had four degrees. I had a Bachelor of Religious Studies from Tyndale, which was called OBC at the time I, I did it. I had a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from University of Waterloo. I had a PJ B.Ed. from University of Windsor. And I had a piano performance degree from the Royal Conservatory of Music. So I sometimes felt like people were getting the wrong idea about me when they saw me as a newspaper carrier or as an ice cream scooper. And this was a time when I feel God was developing in me a humility that came from serving people. I got a lot of practice with service. Without telling people who I was or how many degrees I had, I just scooped their ice cream. I smiled at them as I walked by and put their community newspaper on their porch. And this was a time in my life when God was teaching me something about equity. A lot of people in the mall walked past me. They didn't even see me or maybe they didn't care who I was, probably because they were busy shopping. But maybe it's because I just looked like I was a person who just worked at the mall. But I knew I was much more than that. And this reminds me a little bit of the uh, traveling fellow who was beaten up and some people passed right by him, probably partly because they were busy, but also because of who they understood him to be. But the Good Samaritan really looked at that beaten up guy and saw his humanity. And he knew by helping he would probably be, you know, criticized or looked down upon, but he decided to meet that person's needs anyway, not caring that he, not caring that he had a low status in society. So I was working at this ice cream store for about a year when I had the worst day ever. And this might not just be worst day of working at the ice cream store, but it might be in life. It was the middle of the day and a school, a school bus pulled up children piled off and they were there with their teacher. And I cry every time I say this. They were setting up, they had risers and they were getting ready to sing Christmas carols in the mall to the shoppers. And uh, tears started streaming down my face because that used to be me. That should be me. I can't, I can't believe that's not me. Why am I stuck behind this ice cream counter? So at this low point, I decided to take a step toward doing what I really wanted to do. So I took some extra paper routes so I could save up money and start my master's degree in education. I couldn't get work as a teacher, but I just jumped into the world of research about teaching and learning. And for me, this was about developing professionalism. Because, you know, as we talked about before, the Good Samaritan was actually quite professional. When he saw the beaten up 
a traveler, it's not like he just wanted to help him or had compassion, but like he actually knew what to do. He had the resources and then he went about it. So I became a researcher. I studied ed tech. I developed a mobile app for learning. I started thinking very deeply about music learning and inclusive arts pedagogy. And I was becoming equipped to take on tasks I didn't yet know I was gonna get to do. So after my master's, I was still not hired as a teacher, so I began a PhD, and I did not know many people who had done a degree like this. I wanted to find a Christian woman with a PhD in education that I could look up to and learn from. So I used Google, and I found Dr. Carla Nelson, who was a professor at Tyndale. I emailed her, and I asked, can I hear your story? And she became my mentor. And Carla is a brilliant Christian woman with a giant heart and a strong vision. And my relationship with Carla is an example of how I learned something about collegiality, about how valuable it is to lean on someone, to put yourself near someone that you want to be like, to ask for help. And the Good Samaritan did this. He asked for help. He asked the innkeeper to, um, to care for the traveler. He gave him some money. The Good Samaritan could only do so much on his own, but by working together, they were able to provide just greater and longer care for that person. So meanwhile, having started at number 700 on the seniority list, year after year, I slowly inched up on this list. So eventually, I was in the top 50. And what that meant in that board was that I had a chance of potentially getting an interview for a teaching position. But just as that happened, I learned that Tyndale was looking to hire a professor in the education department. And as you know, this is where I ended up. So on my path to get here, I ended up growing in professionalism, equity, excellence, collegiality, and service. But some of the ways in which this happened, I would not have chosen those for myself because they were hard. As you launch into your career as educators, there will be things that have an impact on you that you don't get to choose. The political climate in Ontario, who the students in your classroom are, who your grade partner is. So some of these situations may not be what you would choose and maybe God will be prompting you to learn through these experiences, to continue growing. The story of the Good Samaritan is actually about a choice, though, that he made to do something. There are a lot of choices you can make. For example, in the staff room, you can choose to talk about students as if those students or their parents were right there listening. You can choose to share resources with your grade partner. You can look for ways to support the principal and the vice principal at your school. Even if others around you might pass on those things, they might pass right on by, say, we're not doing those things, you don't have to pass. You can choose to do them. Through all of your experiences, those you choose and those you don't, I believe God is there with you and he's going out ahead of you and he's already there. I believe, teacher candidates, that each of you were meant to come to Tyndale to do a B.Ed. Maybe for some of you, Tyndale was not your first choice. You thought you were going to go somewhere else, but you ended up here. Maybe some of you just strangely bumped into someone one day who mentioned Tyndale, and you were like, they have a program, and you applied and came here. I believe God is interested in the details of your life and what happens to you, and that he directs your path. I believe this proverb in the Bible, Proverbs 16, verse 9. We can make our plans but the Lord determines our steps. God determined my steps and I ended up as a professor at Tyndale, which I did not see in advance. God's hand is on you, dear ones, as you take your next steps, even though you may not be able to see what all of those next steps are yet. And I pray you will find comfort each time you're in a difficult circumstance, that you will remember God is with you, that you will keep learning and growing that you would keep moving forward in faith, that you would stay connected with people you look up to and can learn from as you continue to live out your calling as teachers. Good morning, everyone. 
Um, my name is Marjorie Kerr. Not all of you know me. Um, I have the privilege of being the president here at Tyndale University. And I am absolutely delighted to join with you this morning for your Convocation Chapel service for lots of reasons, most of them starting with COVID. Um, this is the first time that I've been able to meet in this setting just with our teacher candidates and your staff and faculty and advisors as a group. And here's something I've come to the conclusion on just spending the last 45 minutes with you. I need to find a way to spend more time with the teacher candidates. This has been a wonderful time of chapel and gathering. Um, so Heather, tuck that one away. We'll talk about that. Um, but you know, as you finish up your last assignments and prepare to conclude your time in this program, there's something that I hope you will take away from your Tyndale experience in addition to your degrees. Heather, just a few moments ago, read to you the mission statement of Tyndale University. Flowing from that mission, over the last 18 months, we developed a new strategic plan for Tyndale University, and it's now in play. It's out there, and we're starting to live it. An overarching theme of the strategic plan is the vision of Tyndale as a flourishing Christian university in all that we do and for all those we serve, both directly and indirectly. That includes our students, staff and faculty, partners, neighbors, the city, the church, and so forth. And woven through this plan about flourishing, there is also a theme of hospitality. Hospitality not just as a warm welcome or an act of kindness, as important as those are, but hospitality as a theological expression of who we are and how we live out our mission as a Christian university that seeks to serve the church and the world for the glory of God. So these themes of hospitality and flourishing they're related to Heather's comments just now. They're related to the, the worship and the songs we've sung and the scripture that we've heard this morning. And they're absolutely, of course, related to the five learning outcomes associated with your education as teacher candidates. It's hard to imagine the Good Samaritan behaving as he did in the absence of a deep moral understanding of hospitality and of how one single individual contributes to the flourishing of another. It's hard to imagine how professionalism, excellence, equity, collegiality, and service, the five learning outcomes you focused on during your time as teacher candidates, how are they possible in the absence of a foundation built upon this broader understanding of hospitality and a commitment to being part of the flourishing of others. In your case, those others are largely going to be young people, children and youth who you encounter as students and who will become the future citizens, leaders, and influencers in our communities. Tyndale cannot flourish as a Christian university if we are not engaged in the flourishing of others. You and I, individually or professionally, cannot flourish if we are not engaged in the flourishing of others. And your emerging professional identity is directly linked, of course, as we've heard this morning, to nurturing and fostering the flourishing of others. Your students, your peers, the administration, the families that you will be in touch with. You know, the truth is, you're at the end of your degree, so I expect you already know all of that. And that is probably part of what drew you to becoming teachers in the first place. But my hope is that you also experienced this during your time at Tyndale, and that the experience will continue to shape you for all that comes next. You are in the final days maybe some of you have got it down to hours, um, of completing your Bachelor of Education degrees. There's really no advice that we can give you at this point, so my best advice to you is don't lose focus now. <laughs> You're that close to the finish line. 
Press through to the end and know that we will always be cheering you on as you leave Tyndale and continue to in your careers and as that progresses and as you live out your vocation as teachers. And don't forget to come back next May for the full convocation experience with the caps and gowns and parchments and the excitement that goes along with that. I will be standing there and I will look forward to shaking your hand and passing you your parchment uh, as you walk across the stage. We bless you this morning. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we commit you to God who is able to keep you. God bless you. My name is uh, Beth Green. I'm the Provost and Chief Academic Officer of Tyndale University. And um, thank you, Heather, for inviting me to pray um, for, uh, for all of the teacher candidates who are graduating. Before I do that, I just want to let you in on, well, I don't think it's a secret. I think you know that the B.Ed team pray for you. It's one of the ways that they show their love and investment in you. And they will continue to pray for you even after you've completed your program. That's just who they are. But here at Tyndale, we see prayer, conversation with God, as part of our commitment to loving our neighbor. It's one of the ways that we keep in step with Jesus, not because God or Jesus need us to tell them what to do, <laughs> but because conversation is part of relationship. So even if prayer is not that familiar to you or always part of your regular practice, I just invite you to be still and listen as we take a moment to talk with God. Shall we pray? Dear God, we praise you. We thank you that you watch over the road before us and you watch over us. Thank you that your help and support come through relationship. Please forgive us when we miss you in the faces of others. Teach us to love abundantly like you do and to protect the weak and the vulnerable and the young. We pray for these graduates and their particular call to teach young people. Inspire them to kindle the flame of curiosity in their students as you have kindled it in them. Provide our Tyndale graduates with good guides for the road ahead, even as they guide the next generation. Protect them when the traveling is hard going and they are weary. Strengthen them to stand for justice and truth and goodness in their classrooms and help them to bring peace and wisdom into the communities that they join. Thank you for the precious time our graduates spent with us as teacher candidates. Help them to recall encouragements and friendships from the program and know that these were gifts from you, Lord Jesus. May Jesus keep you from all harm. Watch over your lives, your comings and goings, both now and forever. Amen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so first, I do want to mention um, Ruth being so humble. I don't know if you're aware. She actually wrote the lyrics for the beautiful song that was a gift offering to all of you. So thank you, Ruth. Second, um, I have to correct an error that was made by a number of people. They called you teacher candidates. You're teachers. The candidates are out. So um, I will be saying the benediction, which is basically a short prayer of blessing. Oh, I see some parents here. OK. So if we could all um, close our eyes. Father. 
Thank you for bringing all 72 to this very moment, a moment of incredible achievement that is worthy of celebration. Lord, it was you who carried each one through their spectacular highs, but also their excruciating lows. Father, thank you that you will never leave nor forsake them. You will continue to carry each one as newly minted teachers. In this profession, trials will come. But Father, let them see and experience hope because you desire to bless each one with breathtaking mountaintop experiences which are going to come through their students whom you, as Heather said, you've gone before them, you've entrusted them already into their hands. Lord, you have modeled what it means to leave the 99 because it's all about rescuing the one. I pray, God, that each teacher here will follow your humble example, being empowered with complete assurance that it is you who will be their strength, confidence, wisdom, excellence, and love, especially for the lost and marginalized. We bless each one here, Jesus, in your name. Amen.